It's post Christmas coffee talk. Good morning. Um, it's bring your dogs to work day because beans we're nope. putting truly into <laughs> into nope. the shop because he has separation anxiety. And if you noticed on last week's video, there was yiping the whole time. So I thought I'd just bring him to the table. I disagree with bring your dogs to work day. Yeah. Because they bark the whole freaking time. I don't mind the barking, it's the random pooping and stealing wool. No. Hashtag pray for Luke. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's post Christmas. Christmas was yep. fun. Happy holidays. Did you feel that our family was like a lot yesterday? Like, like my our... kids? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean, all of us together collectively are so freaking loud. We're a loud family. We're a real loud family. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I love us being together, but I, I feel that in this house, it was a lot. Well, you can say that when we went on other trips, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a lot. We're just a lot. But I got this nice new hat. Yeah, show them that. From Sherry. That is knitted in our Erin weights, and it is the Fisherman rib pattern. Um, I'm going to have to post that on Instagram because I can't remember the designer offhand. But it's Matter. It's Matter. Both Aaron Waite Matter and um, Farm Friends Aaron. Yeah, through Farm Friends Aaron. Natural Farm Friends Aaron. But I'm knitworthy. You are so knitworthy. Just not sweater knitworthy. Yes, you are. Do you know that I knitted about five rows on that on Christmas Day? Oh, so it's a longer skirt now. Yes. It's a longer skirt. And those five rows took me about an hour. Just, yeah. just so you know. I'm sorry, I'm larger framed. Yes. Big body, big boned. You're in the fluffy. You're in the fluffy girls group. Mm -hmm. Um, big exciting thing this past week, achievements for past week, we got the flocks sorted, the majority of them. Um, it nearly killed all of us and sent me back about two days in my recovery. But it was a good time. Yeah. I kind of well, loved doing it. It gave us a chance to body score uh, the sheep and the lambs and stuff like that because we noticed that some of the lambs looked thinner than what they really should at this age and it appears that the bigger sheep like Betty, Big Betty, that's on our Whoa, shirt, big Betty, ram -a -lam -a -lam. it's just pushing the smaller sheep out of the way to get to the food and taking priority and stuff like that. So we actually separated some of the smaller ewes away from the bigger ones just to make sure that they get to have a little bit more food and have a little better body condition than, than what they're at. So Give a two second explanation to the internet about what body condition is and how you score it. So so body condition, you can look it up online, but there's a, it's a score of one through five. And you want them to be about a three or a four where you can feel their spine, but it's not like a point. Um, because as it gets pointier and pointier, it means that they're becoming a little bit more malnourished. So the ones from that we sorted, I would have gave like a two. I wasn't happy at all with, with how much of the spine I could feel. And not um, truly malnourished, but well, I'm sure what's happening is because the the weather's colder, mm -hmm. they're burning their when they eat and ruminate. Rumination is what keeps them warm, and they're they're burning more rumination to mm -hmm. stay warm versus storing fat on their bodies. This is why animals bulk up in the winter. In addition to their coats getting bigger, they actually put on more layers of fat. So it's not necessarily malnutrition, but it's just they're, well, they're not, just not as consuming thick as what as much as they need as we want them to be for this time of year. Um, like we like them to always be at a three. Yeah, but Betty, I would score like a six. <laughs> She's so freaking big, but and that's why some of the girls are in it too. Yeah, so we we scored the the lambs and the sheep and separated the two groups and trying to keep everybody healthy and in proper weights, especially for lambing. Yes, the weights are very important for lambing if they're too big. They have more issues with lambing itself and breeding. Yeah. If they're too big for breeding. If they're too big for lambing, especially especially in the last month, which we're not there yet, that won't be in until February, but especially in the last month, it can that um, if they're too big, it can cause um, toxemia, uh, just like humans get, and um, difficulty birthing. Yeah. Uh, they really need to be in good athletic condition before delivery. So we've now got our group of the fluffies and the skinny girls. Yeah. Well, and luckily we did it before the snow apocalypse that came, which was a joke because all it was was really cold and, you know, like pushing the snow around. I mean, I could still see, I could still see grass outside right now. Okay, but major drifting, especially between our two fences, I got yeah. the Land Rover stuck on, 
happened on the 23rd, the eve of Christmas Eve, we went out yeah. to dinner at the White Horse. And on the way back, I got stuck because I didn't, I just thought I'd be fine because it's taller than my old car and I just plowed through and one point the driveway was about four feet deep. Yeah, so I, I had to come to the rescue with the, uh, the Ford F-350 and pull her out. Hashtag at any point Ford, you could definitely sponsor us because we've been loyal customers for a good long time. Hashtag yeah. Ford. Hashtag, Ford tough. Hashtag people who want to sponsor us. I do, I'm not interested in dog bandanas or crappy jewelry. I would really like Carhartt diesel fuel. <laughs> diesel fuel? Diesel fuel. People How are about, just going to give like, us diesel fuel? BP and Enron. Oh, yeah, that's not a good match for us. But we would like some free diesel fuel. Um, and Carhartt would be good because we really need a lot of that. My pants froze this weekend. Yeah, so. that was cold. Yep. Yeah. Cold, cold. But um, this week, what we're going to try to do is we have um, some tuna sheep that I picked up from Ohio, uh, what, a month and a half ago? Yeah, I mean, they're well out of quarantine. Yeah. Maybe even two? No, but seven weeks, I bet. They're in our um, northern lambing barn right now. And when we got them, they came with a bunch of burrs in their, in their wool. So we have to trim out all the burrs so that our shearer can come and get it out and then, or shear them, I should say, and then we can skirt it and it just makes it a lot easier. And sometimes um, the shears won't even touch an animal that has that many burrs because it messes up their, their shears itself. Yeah, and we certainly wouldn't let anything go to the mill that had even a speck of a burr in it because that can really screw up equipment, yeah. especially because it's all reconditioned old turn of the 20th century equipment. Yeah, so, it's really old. Yeah, we wouldn't do that to our mill. But so yeah, we're gonna, we're going to trim them, trim hooves, just check them over before we put them in with the uh, the big girls. Because these are full grown ewes that are two, three, four year old uh, ewes. So we'll put them over. Um, and then it's just kind of trying to keep everything from icing. Go buying some more tank heaters. Well, those, I don't, so frustrating. They, they can't even keep up with how cold it is. Right. So, I mean, I had heaters in all these different stock tanks and... They were still freezing. Mm -hmm. I just, I can't win. I was out we there We can't banging. win with the heaters. The animals, though, were not really affected by the storm at all. Com completely cozy. I mean, it did get cold enough that the cows chose to go into their shelter, which is, I mean, that they never do happens. that almost never. Yeah. But, but even the sheep, the sheep were going into their enclosures a lot more. Oh, were they? Yeah. Because I kept watching driveway pasture girls. That's the <coughs> pasture closest to my house. And I kept on um, peeking out at them. And, and they were just hanging out like sideways, lizard conditions. And they're just like munching, munching, munching. Laying out, ruminating outdoors where they had access to a run-in mm -hmm. shelter. But not a lot of using of it. But again, those were the thick girls, so they had all of the fat insulation that they needed. So it's probably the skinnier ones were going into the barn. Yeah. But I mean, everybody has the shelter that they need. It didn't bother the horses at all. Um, Bear ripped his new and... Not cheap. Not cheap. Not cheap. Um, Baker sheet, which is, that um, that's a, a brand and a sheet is what you call a coat for a horse. So they're wearing their... Um, light temp winter coats and bear ripped a strap off his cindy we're gonna have to see if you have some strapping like it's like seatbelt because he was out there rolling in the snow and he, ripped the buckle right off so he's a heathen. He's a that heathen. is now two coats that he has ripped well maybe he doesn't like coats i mean we could take it off if he doesn't I'm just saying. but then that's gonna well i mean it's gonna teach him like hey if i don't want to wear this i'll just rip it off and there goes a quick hundred bucks two hundred bucks so, anyway. Um, but then, yeah, we're just trying to finish up some stuff around the farm. We actually have to order some more hay because the round bales, they are going through <laughs> round bales like it's, they're nothing. It's, also, if hay growers would like to sponsor us, that would be awesome. It just went uh, winter in Michigan. It's just. Winter in Michigan. And, and honestly, I'll, I'll take it. I was not as prepared with the amount of hay that we need as I thought we needed. Just, do you think it's because it's a poorer quality of hay? No, I just we just got the, the problem is the problem is now. they're wasting hay. They're I wasting know. some hay, and we have 120 sheep now. Yeah. Okay. Last year we had 46, mm -hmm. and now we have 120 sheep. Mm -hmm. So I I did the math of like, oh, what did we do last year? Okay, let's just order. Nope. No. 
I watched them. When did you give them a um, Skinny Girls in the South Landing Barn? You mm -hmm. gave them a new bale, um, I gave them a round, round bale, bale. Yep. on the 23rd, I think it was. 23rd, yes. Yep. On the 23rd. Yeah, and they just got done with it. Uh, well, this, this morning they're going to need new hay. But. Yeah, like yesterday when we were, um, the family, well, it was all over. We had our family Christmas yesterday, and Luke was giving tractor rides. And I looked up, and I'm like, there is no hay there. Mm -hmm. Not zero. But, but that, that, that's, what? That, that's what I'm saying. It's just. Yeah, it's a lot. Lesson learned is, I guess, do a little bit better calculation of how much we're going to need for. Yeah, but here's the thing. Going. Where are we going to store it if we bought more? Well, round, we round bales, I put some in my barn, and then we have some uh, underneath the lean-to mm -hmm. on the turkey shed, but and then the squares, we could put more squares up top of the landing barn. Right. Plenty of room there. Squares cost about five times as much to feed as round bales. Well, weight-wise, weight yeah. I mean, we're paying seven fifty, almost 8 bucks a square bale, and we're paying $60 a round bale. Which was a, a steal. Our last ones were 70 or something, but... Um, there's, what do we figure? There's like 12. Roughly. Cause these ones are smaller though. Like the uh -huh. first, first round bales we had were like 1100 pounds. Yeah. Huge. And those waste, th those lasted probably a week and a half. With 40 sheep. That was a well, year ago the, that we had them. Well, the, but that was the summer. We gave a couple round bales to them. Yeah. But it was also the summer. So they had pasture too. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Okay. But anyway, so these ones I would say are probably about maybe 600 pounds or something like that. And they're lasting about two and a half, three days. Which makes sense. If an 1100 pound lasted a week. Yeah. It's twice. So don't worry. Okay. It's just money. Don't worry about it. Math, math and math and money. Um, yeah. So feeding, buying Eating. new water buckets. Mm -hmm. um, sorting today. Last week after this, because we had the ring set up and everything, Cindy and I filmed a What's in Sherry sweater bag video, and I my second priority is to get that uploaded to YouTube today. And then YouTube or Instagram? YouTube. Okay. Because it's like 25 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, and it means you have too much crap. Well, it means the bag just holds a ton of stuff. And yes, I did have <laughs> too much crap. I had like eight projects worth of yarn in there. Um, so I need to get that uploaded and I want to send out a newsletter. Um, I have been knitting on this, which is also the same fisherman's pattern as yours because it just knits up so darn fast. And this is um, the December colorway of Cindy's Club. And it was the theme for December was cozy. And if you notice in the beginning of the picture, and you can go back and look at it because it's still on the Cindy's Yarn Club page, in the front of that picture was my tortoise shell glasses sitting on a, a book. And that was kind of the inspiration. I think she totally nailed it. Um, kutch, a little bit of matter because it's not just a solid kutch, it's slightly, um, I wouldn't say variegated, but tonal, and coal based ink. Um, makes these spots and we don't normally do flex and spots because we're we're more of just a consistent thing It has been so fun knitting with this um, This is for Brendan. It didn't get done in time for Christmas, but he understands I'll have it done in time for when I see him on the 5th to celebrate Anna's birthday um, It's beautiful it, though. It, it really is, is so nice. beautiful and I think on camera it's not gonna really look like anything but um, Cindy's Yarn Club has now, you can't, I'm showing you this, but you can't have it because it was the December colorway and it's gone forever. You cannot have. Uh, you cannot have this, no, no, no. Um, drop us a comment if you know what that's a reference to, bonus points to you. Um, January is up there now and January- It's gonna be awesome. Is my favorite. It's gonna be awesome. Look at the look at the um, inspiration picture for that. The color is called Hoarfrost, which is I know right. Hoar H O A R oh, okay. Frost okay. is that beautiful frost that there. It's very very slight and it coats the um, like the branches and stuff and it makes the trees look like they're glittered. You know what I'm talking about? Are you thinking about anything? No. I'm, no. I'm just. Just sitting there. Just, just, you know, yeah. the word okay. itself. Well, anyways, yeah. the inspiration picture is beautiful. Ignore Luke. He's an idiot. 
and you gotta it's, love the it's going to be great. You have until the 15th of January to register for the um, January color of Cindy's Yarn Club because after that it gets shipped out and you can't have it anymore. Again, it goes, if there's any leftover, it goes into the vault, which December there was, January is going quickly. But we, well, we have fingering, right? We have fingering, Wor worsted. sock, and worsted are the three base options. Um, yeah, and it comes with not only the yarn, but some sort of a fun surprise. Uh, December's colorway came with a set of three of our ornaments, which mm -hmm. was, um, a twenty dollar value right there, so it was kind of a heck of a deal, actually. Yeah. I didn't get an ornament. You didn't get an ornament. No. I think there's a couple left, so you can have it before we take that tree down. I'm sure it's going to happen this week. Nice. Oh, speaking of Christmas nice. trees, <laughs> yes, Declan. He's. Yeah, he's. We're we're shooting, but Declan and Jack are out there doing chores, and Declan's needing something. See, that's why I like filming days, because I could stay inside, nice and warm, in a t-shirt. And they're out there nice and cold. Okay. Um, we were talking about Christmas. Oh, Christmas trees. So if you're local to Dryden, Michigan or anywhere there about, um, please feel free to drop off your fresh, real Christmas tree. Um, just at the, chuck it out the window as you're driving by slowly at the corner of our road barn driveway. The address is 4068 Huff Road, Dryden. We have our, um, Mitchell Wool Black Iron sign out there. Just, just drop it there. The sheep and goats love, love, love to eat mm -hmm. Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. In fact, we'll, um, mine's going to go out there tomorrow, today or tomorrow, and they will gobble it up by the end of the day to the point that they're going to leave it like one of those beautiful polished. It almost um, looks like, like, like a walking stick, like those really nice Yeah, like bark natural wood. They love the bark as much as the needles. Mm -hmm. um, the only caveat is we can't take anything that has any da anything dangerous on it. So no tinsel, no icicles, no fakey icicles, no flocking. But other than that, they mm -hmm. love a Christmas tree. So feel free to dump it by the road in our farm and we'll just collect them and they get one every couple of days or so. Well, as big you, as you, the flock well, is now, we could give them one every few days. You just, they won't you, can't over, you can't overload with them because yeah. that, then it upsets the ruminant system and stuff like that. But. Yep, and they need to focus. I mean, the, the tree is mostly a treat. They would eat it in the wild, but we need them to focus their energy on eating hay. So Much to your chagrin. Like, huh? Much to your yeah, chagrin. Yeah, I know, exactly. So it's like eat your broccoli before your cookies kind of a scenario, but, but they love it. So yeah, trees. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is that we need to get price tags on. City has made 24 plus, how many simple totes? Six? Six of those. 24. 24 sherry sweater, bag. sweater bags. So we are well stocked at the moment. A, a good number of them have sold, but we still have a lot left. Um, she's added a really great new feature to the Simple Tote. This is our most um, af affordable handmade bag. It's got leather handles, um, and she add it's just a simple, nice, basic bag. Cindy's freaking out because her phone went off. Um, it's got a toggle now, which keeps it, oh, that's Luke. It keeps it open. Um, and it's really great for a handbag. Um, it can be a project bag, but it's it's the simple tote because there's nothing going on inside. Um, our sister-in-law, Susan, uses one as a handbag. Um, but it's great for a couple skein project, of course, made on the farm by Cindy. It's got the Mitchell wool leather tag on it. Um, in case you're wondering about my sweater, this is one of the... It, it's the first Colorworks sweater I ever knit. So back in like 2018, I think, it is the Fern and Feather pattern by Jennifer Steingass, um, which is like Knit Love Wool, I think is her Instagram. Um, very first one, it's knit and worsted. And it is not our yarn because I knit this long before the dream of having sheep. But I was thinking about this. You're gonna ask about it. You're gonna wonder whose yarn it is. I'm not 100% certain to be honest because it's like, six years and 120 sheep ago. Um, but we have something really similar. We have our Cormo worsted in deepest pine green. There's only about one sweater's worth of this left. And then um, natural raw. So you can essentially get 
just about the same look as what I'm wearing. Ours is slightly less green because again, we're natural dye and this is definitely an acid dye yarn, um, but still beautiful green. Yeah, uh, Fern and Feather by Jennifer Steingast. Uh, I'm gonna have to pause because Luke's gone. Back. Where, I'm sorry. Who were you talking to, Luke? So I was talking to uh, a water damage company because Merry Christmas to me and mine because we had had a pipe burst uh, Christmas Day when we got home from the in-laws, uh, grandparents' house, all that kind of stuff. And uh, there was water on my kitchen floor, in my crawl space. Uh, yep, damaged a little heater that we had going on, trying to keep the pipes from freezing or unthawing them. So, uh, yeah, Merry, Merry freaking Christmas. Merry Christmas. You get to renovate your... Very newly, newly renovated first kitchen. Christmas in the renovated kitchen slash house. So yeah, I apologize for the interruption, but I had to talk to the, the cleanup company that's waiting for my insurance company to now contact them. So yep, good times, good times, good times. Mary throwing money out the window. <sighs> um, but anyway, so I talked about the simple tone. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that gorgeous, gorgeous? Well, I'm hoping somebody will. Purchase this bag, otherwise my wife wants me to buy it. I really don't uh, need another bag sitting in our house, and nor does she need another bag. <laughs> but, yeah, I put it out there. The time that Luke there. pissed off the internet. She doesn't need another bag. But, no, I, it's a gorgeous bag, though. It's crazy beautiful. Cindy made it. Do you know where the 15-foot hose is, the new one that we just got? In the back of the trailer. Yeah. It's, it's in there. Um, yeah. Working on a farm. There's always something. There's always something. But this is the first time Cindy's actually done this kind of clasp, like through the leather. Oh, yeah, that was a special. I bought that clasp um, when I wanted to make bags when um, I used to do that one. Time. So, but this is a, a Pendleton, like, repurposed, reused, kept from being thrown in the, the dumpster piece of... Uh, it's dead stock. Pendleton dead stock. Yes, exactly. And then this is um, cotton. Plaid, zip it open and show them the inside because it's so gorgeous. It's got the Mitchell wool tag. It has detachable straps on the back. So we have the nice backpack leather straps on the Beautiful back. Beautiful tag. Adjustable. Um, inside. There's a, there's pockets. There, there's a cotton liner on the inside. Cool. All the all the organizational. Oh yeah, and then that pocket's big enough to put a laptop in. So this is not truly a pod project bag. Um, you use yours for travel. Yes. Yeah. I, I Cindy. And you use it for a weekend, don't you? Yeah. No. I just I take it with. I just put my clothes in there for a long weekend. Especially or, like when we're hauling to pick up animals or something. Mm -hmm. I noticed you bring instead that of bag taking all the time. instead of taking some sort of like roller bag or some other yeah. little yeah. I just yeah. put all my stuff into. Uh, yeah, you got yours last Christmas. Yep. Uh, so. Cindy made him one for Christmas for me. I commissioned it out of this beautiful wool pillow that one of my dogs had destroyed. Is the outside. It's got two horses on it. And then the inside is um, one of Paul's flannel shirts. So, So yeah, I love that. Yeah. She, she does great work. We're lucky to have her making these bags for us and dying for us, honestly. But um, Dying wool. What did I take that as? Dying? Like throwing yourself in front of the tractor. Well, I don't expect that from her, but no, you know. No. So, uh, we should. Oh, shout out to um, Morning Light Studio, West Virginia. I finally got my hands on one of her mugs that are hand thrown, and especially Holy Grail. I've been wanting the rainbow particularly, and I've been trying to buy a mug. It's a situation like when we release some of our special bags and they sell out in mm -hmm. minutes. It's like this. Um, favorite child, Megan, uh, got it for me. Like she, she and I were both trying to buy it at the same time and she completed her checkout. So yesterday she was favorite child because she brought it. Today she's favorite child. I've been child in blizzards all weekend. I know. And she's got to buy you a freaking mug to get favorite child. You don't understand this mug. I've been trying to get it for six months. Um, so My pants froze. I know your pants froze. And you can try tomorrow. But today is Megan. Today is Megan. Megan I thought Megan was Megan. yesterday. I know, but I got to use it today, and it made me wake up and think, boy, I love Megan the most. In this family, we have to fight like gladiators 
for it's the affection. hunger games for my love <laughs> yes it's exactly like that so tomorrow think about it you could win tomorrow okay mm -hmm. just gonna step my game up. emma's gonna get the day after that though because it's her birthday you automatically get you favorite? automatically get it you get it on your birthday too I mean, unless you act like that. Not like a fucking person. I feel like that last birthday. Really? You didn't? <laughs> I'll remind you that last birthday, you were like four days from getting on a plane to Norway. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll, give yep. that. I'll do that. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's it for coffee chat. We need to go um, take care of those sheep. Yep. Time to go work. So I will note do. that Sherry is currently wearing real pants. If you saw the last episode, she's wearing her... I've got real pants on. I mean, they're overalls. I wore some jeans yesterday, and then I had to lay down because it hurt. The incisions are starting to heal, so now it's like, eh, 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 eh. oh god, not cool. So, so we're doing good. Real pants day. Real pants day. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. And hope you next enjoyed it. Next time, it'll be in the new year. Oh, okay. Ooh. Okay. Goodbye, 2022. 2023. 20, yeah. I don't like to look ahead for last, I don't like to look ahead at years because the last time I did that was 2020 and I'm like, peace out 2020 and then look, look what happened. Yeah. But okay. Thank you. We're thankful for 2022. Bye.